I'll show you how to use Open Asset functionality with the Affinity apps. Open Asset integration is included natively with Publisher, Designer, and Photo, and does not require a separate plugin. Let's start with Publisher, where we'll look at inserting individual images and multiple images simultaneously. First of all, I want to insert an employee headshot into this picture frame here. Within my company's unique Open Asset workspace, I'll go to the Employees section, find Leanne Bell, and access the Files page. When hovering over an image, you'll see this drag and drop icon. Click drag this, then move back to Affinity Publisher, and it will allow you to let go of the mouse button and drop the image into the picture frame. Alternatively, if I detach the master page and delete this picture frame, I can also bring images in onto the current spread without placing them into a picture frame first. One approach is just to drag drop, and the image will be placed at its full resolution relative to the document's DPI value. Or, if I delete this, when drag dropping, I can hold Option on Mac, Alt on Windows before releasing the mouse button, and this will instead switch to the Place Image tool. I can now drag out the image at my desired size, and it will also snap to surrounding layer content. Additionally, I could also use the Vector Crop tool to crop the image non-destructively. To uncrop, I can simply delete the rectangle layer that is acting as a mask. Now let's look at placing multiple images simultaneously. Moving back to my web browser, I'll go to Projects, and I'll click here to access the Link Walkway Files page. I can select the images I want to use individually, or I can click Select All Project Files up here. Then, on the action bar to the right, I can use the drag and drop option. Now, if I just choose to release the mouse button over a blank area of the spread, it will place all the selected images in as individual image layers. This might be useful if you simply want to sort through the images and reposition or rescale them manually. But I want a more ordered approach here, as I'm using picture frames. I'll go back and use the drag drop approach again, but this time I'll hold Option on Mac, Alt on Windows before releasing the mouse button. This time I now have the Place Image tool selected, and the Place Images panel appears on the left hand side. Now I can hover over picture frames to see a preview of how the current image will look when placed, and I can change the order of the images on the panel. I'll single click on each picture frame to place my images, like so. Then I have this image which is surplus to requirements here, so I can use Escape to exit out of image placement. When images from Open Asset are placed, the original asset URL is stored as well, so you can easily access it. Making sure I have the Move tool selected, I'll double click into this picture frame to select the placed image layer. And on the Context toolbar, I can click the Open Stock URL button. This will launch the default web browser and go directly to the asset page, allowing me to make any quick edits if required. Publisher can also import IDML files that contain open asset resources. Here I have a Meet the Team section saved as an IDML file, and I can open it as a separate document. If you are not using authentication tokens which are set up by your company's IT department, you may have to enter your open asset credentials manually. I'll receive a notification in the top right of the document view, informing me how many images are unchanged and how many have been updated. I could also merge this IDML document into my main publication and bring along the Open Asset resources with it. To do this, I'll go to Document, Add Pages from File. Then I'll select the IDML file and click Open. I will bring in all the pages from this IDML file and I will add them in after page 13 of the main document. I'll also choose to import and potentially replace the text styles as well. At the beginning of the video, I mentioned that Open Asset functionality extends to both Affinity Photo and Affinity Designer as well. Let me show you an example of how it might be used in Affinity Photo. I'll go to File, New, and the default option here is a 1920 by 1080 web preset. I'll manually change the width and height to 6000 by 4000 pixels, then click Create. Moving back to the Open Asset interface, 
I'll go to Projects, then access the Renders Project Files page. And I'll drag drop this 3D render onto my empty document in Affinity Photo. To quickly line the image up with the document bounds, I'll make sure snapping is enabled up here, switch to the Move tool with V, and snap this image into place. Now I may want to perform a non destructive sky replacement with this image. The render might be used in other projects, so I don't want to interfere with the original image from Open Asset. First, I'll switch to the Selection Brush tool, and I'll enable Soft Edges on the Context Toolbar. Then, I'll click drag to make a quick selection of the sky, using Option on Mac, Alt on Windows, to quickly subtract from areas where the selection has gone into the foreground detail. Now that I have a selection of the sky, I'll go to Select, Invert Pixel Selection to select the foreground instead, and add a mask layer. This will non-destructively hide the sky, allowing me to composite in a replacement sky. I'll clear the selection with Command D on Mac, Control D on Windows. Then I'll go back to the Files page and drag drop this sky image onto the document. On the Layers panel, I'll click drag the sky layer and move it beneath the original render layer. Then I'll switch to the Move tool with V and position the sky so it sits just beneath the white area where the previous sky was. To blend the new sky in with the foreground, I'll quickly add a brightness contrast adjustment. Then bring both sliders up gradually. I might also want to perform some additional non-destructive retouching to this render. For example, I might select the main render layer and add a color balance adjustment above it. Then modify the sliders until I achieve a slightly warmer look. I could even add a live transform filter, such as a live perspective filter, to the main render. And this will adjust both the render and the mask layer non destructively. Now, if I go to Window Resource Manager, this will list both placed images. I can see that they are still using remote placement. Photo would then be able to update them if required but the masking, adjustments, and any other non-destructive work I choose to apply would still be retained. This could be a really powerful workflow because you could avoid creating redundant copies of your assets whilst still being able to manipulate them on an individual per document basis. So that was an overview of open asset functionality in the Affinity apps. Thank you very much for watching, and I hope you found it useful.